Um, I'm kind of stood here telling you all about um, stuff about the installer and the CD team. Um, I was hoping that, that we might have had more people from the installer team around. Obviously, Joey, our grand, grand architect, is here. Uh, Kibby, unfortunately, can't make it in person, but is probably going to be on IRC and heckling right now, knowing him. Um, so uh, I want to give you a quick update on the status for both for well for both sides of the installer work. What our plans are, particularly for Jesse. Um, of course, we, there are things we'd need help on, and I'll point those out as we go. And if there are any things that uh, people here would like to talk about, if you've got any more ideas, if the things that you would love to do for us, and, and you're just want, wanting guidance on how to do it, then that would be awesome. Um, please, because I am sad to say getting old, my memory is deteriorating by the day it seems, please if somebody could take notes, um, or even all of you, because Gobby is awesome and lets you do that, take notes so we've got a record of this discussion afterwards. Thank you. So, Debian installer status. Excellent. So, um, we have just about two weeks ago released um, Jesse DI Beta 1. Um, it's the first of the betas that we're going to do before Jesse. I very, very much doubt it'll be the last. Um, there are known bugs. Um, there were some known issues and regressions that are already documented on the web. Um, please, if, you can, if you're interested, go and download some of the images and help testing with them. Um, please report um, of any issues you find in as much detail as you can because at the moment um, you know, we, we can't test all the hardware, we can't test all of the architectures ourselves. The more information we can get about the possible issues, the better. Um, now in particular, um, there are worries about some architectures in the, which suggest that those architectures have not been tested very well at all in the last, say, year or maybe even two years. I know Kibi in particular, um, you'll have seen on the, you'll, some of you may have seen on the Debian boot list, has been worrying about the K3BSD ports uh, as, as a major thing. There are quite a number of um, major issues which we would have hoped if, if people were using this every day, we'd have seen reported as bugs already. So that is a, is a major concern. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's also, um, and again, Kibby holds his hand up for this, um, the scheduling of the releases of it, the installer um, has, well, it's been an issue as long as we've been doing um, DI and even going back to boot floppies before that. We've had lots of discussions over the years and suggesting we should go for like a monthly release cadence or we should go for a two month cycle or something. And everybody says, yes, that would be really awesome. Um, we might get there eventually. Um, what would be a really nice thing to do would be able to do that and have uh, DI migrate mostly through the archive as normal into testing. Um, it's never quite got there. Um, one of the issues around that again is manpower. Um, the more people we have actually working on things and helping to test them, um, and also con you know, contributing the bug fixes, um, you know, the better. So, we have a number of plans. Um, first things first, we're just making the changes right now that we were talking about two, three, four years ago. Um, the graphical installer is going to be the default for Jesse on those architectures where it's, where it's supported. So, specifically on x86, to be honest. Um, Again, we've spoken about this for years, we just never got around to actually making it happen. We had a plan at DevCon for Nicaragua to say, yes, let's do it. And we kind of ran out of steam, we got sidetracked into other things. Um, it's not just a case of it's pretty. The reason for the graphical installer being preferred is there are a number of uh, writing systems and, and there are a number of uh, languages that we just cannot support in the text installer. And we want to be able to do a better job. Um, the default desktop discussion has reared its head again in the last few weeks. Um, and as is typical on this, there's a lot more heat than light. I actually have some light. 
Joey wants to chip in. Um, do we have a mic? and said, well, what do you think the correct procedure would be to find the default desktop? Mm -hmm. Let's find the procedure first. And he pointed out that the architecture requalification that's done uh, by the release team is kind of similar to what we want. So what I've come up with is a wiki page which allows the various teams who have input to send in input and then we get some kind of a criteria to... and. Um, of course, there are certain issues like accessibility that can just automatically default it to GNOME if it does turn out that GNOME is the only option. Sure. Um, what I would like to do is schedule an ad hoc boff later on um, this week and go over that wiki page and see if there's some more options we want to add and see what see what details we can get and then hurry up with that decision um, by the end of DevConf or something in that area or maybe the week after. Okay. Um, cool. So that's the default desktop and I'll be yeah. scheduling that. Um, you know, some sometime not tomorrow because cheese and wine is tonight. Some other time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and regarding the desktop choice, which I see you also have up there, um, the current status, of course, is that a while ago Franz Pop had put in uh, Sys Linux menus to work around the fact that DI doesn't let you choose um, the desktop at install yes. time. Yeah. Um, but we also have some other not unrelated issues like the fact that some of the CDDs would like to be able to be in the task cell menu but then that bloats the task cell menu with all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. So um, I know that Kibby had suggested, I don't think he's suggest suggested it now, but he had earlier, uh, well we could pick the desktop and then yeah, I could say which desktop do you want. I personally don't like that option just because it's then asking you which of these three options, which if you are a new user to Linux, do you want? It's another strange mess of terminology to throw at the user. What I would prefer to do is have at the bottom of the list mm -hmm. of tasks something that says more tasks or finer detail or something like that, which then sure. opens up another window, another menu where you can then say GNOME, KDE, XFC, and also it can and have a whole slew of other. It can have other like, stuff, yeah. and then but then you need criteria for what actually fit in that list. If someone has a good thought, some good thoughts mm -hmm. about how to avoid that list bloating to 200 items, which is not going to be usable and which sure. is the default if we have such a list. I mean, maybe that would be a good one to do in the, to do in that, that later boff as well, let yeah. people have a think first. Um, maybe, I don't know if that same boff, but maybe, sure. Or, or maybe even another boff, but yeah. yeah. But um, I think the issue for getting this to happen in time for the, for the release is primarily going to be translations. So independently, if someone would like to think about what that menu item should say and get the wording and get it start to mm. be translated, you can just put the string in task cell right now and let Christian Perrier work his magic, and if we get <laughs> enough translations, yeah. then we can have the feature. I think that's where we're at. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, it, the the thing about the default desktop that a lot of people haven't don't or haven't understood thus far is, I mean, I've seen uh, quite a few people say, "Why do we even have a default desktop?" and and we must have a default, <laughs> but whether even w whether some people think about it or not, and think it's worth it or not. Exactly for, as Joey says, for the people, frankly, who don't know what they want, they just want to download Debian, install it. Um, without a default, it's impossible. Um, so, artwork. Um, again, this has come up quite recently. Uh, Paul Tagliamonte, I, I have no idea how to pronounce his name, so apologies Paul if I've just, Paul Tag, yes. Um, <laughs> has, is, seems to be on top of this. Um, there's going to be, if, there's still quite a bit of work to do once we actually have artwork that's chosen because it needs to be put into the right format, it's got to be set up. It, it's not a huge amount of work, but it, it's going to take some time, so don't expect it to happen tomorrow, but that this is, it, it, you know, it's on the way. Um, there's a whole lot of bug fixes. We, we're already aware of quite a few. For example, there's, uh, there's issues with the firmware support. Um, it, at the moment in the Jesse um, installer, um, that's one that's, that's really important. Um, there's others that are, are going to happen. Um, new architectures. Um, some people may have spotted, some people may not have done, that literally in the last uh, fortnight we've had two new architectures introduced into Unstable. 
which is ARM64 and PPC64EL. Um, both of the teams who were getting those architectures bootstrapped very much want them to be in Jesse. So um, those are probably going to happen in the installer very soon as well. Um, basically, it's, it's down to porter work. Um, as part of that, if you're a package maintainer, you may end up being told your package needs fixes to be able to, 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 uh, to build on one of these new architectures. If you're involved, if you, you have a package that is involved in the installer at all, obviously this is going to be critical. Um, we're going to be sending out a mail later today to, to explain more of what's coming. Um, secure boot is Again, something we've been talking about for at least two years. Um, we haven't made a whole lot of progress on this because it seems all of the people who know what to do here and have the skills don't have the time. Uh, I spoke to a guy yesterday after Colin's uh, grub buff who said he's very keen to help. Um, Aaron, if he's around, I guess he's not. So. Um, I told him to mail Debian boot. Again, if anybody else wants to help with this, that would be awesome. We're going to be t um, discussing this again later in the week. I know Steve and Colin and I, uh, maybe others, will be getting together to work out the infrastructure we need and make sure it happens. We might have secure boot for Jesse. It's, I've, I've question marked it because, to be honest, it's not critical, but it would be nice to have. Um, last thing is, um, the graphical installer still uses GTK2. Um, GTK2 is, as I understand it, deprecated upstream. Everybody has been told, go to GTK3, it's much better, wah, wah, wah. Um, we do need to move over the bits of the graphical installer over to GTK3. Frankly, if it happens for Jesse, it'll be a miracle, unless anybody wants to go and help do that. So, talking of help, please help. <laughs> we need help testing, as I said. We have a vast number of options. You know, For all of the possible Debian installations out there, um, there are paths through the installer to get to that. We cannot test all of these. If you have an architecture that basically Kibi and I don't have at home, um, we, you need, we need you to help us test it. If you come to us after the Jesse release and say, oh God, but, but PowerPC doesn't work on my, on my, uh, my iMac G4 or something, um, we're going to be able to do nothing for you at that point. If you tell us now, we might be able to help you fix it. Um, you know, and that's critical. Yes, Wookie, do we have a microphone? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say the I went to the SUSE conference and they have the same problem of testing the installer and they have a whole load of magic software which actually runs through a large proportion of the possible options <laughs> to check that they do actually appear and mm. say what they should say and that's all free software uh, and you can write tests and we should possibly actually look at just using their tech for test coverage if we were enthused. Thank um, you for volunteering. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on my list. Uh, yes. But yes, I, I just know that this exists and it's sure. something we should probably look okay. at. Um, I'm afraid I forgot what it's called right now, but um, uh, I could find out. Open Susa Magic, yeah. something. Fine. Um, so again, we need to help test. You, we don't necessarily need experts who can fix everything, but we, if, we can't, if, if between us we can't even check that, that the installer boots on some architectures, um, it's very, very difficult for us to go anything beyond that. Um, bug handling. The flip side of this, of course, is we're going to get bug reports posted um, for DI. Um, we already have more DI bug reports than we can possibly cope with. And I, when I say we, I mean Kibby. Um, <laughs> he is tireless and was talking to me at like literally 6 a.m. his time last night. Um, so I have no idea if he's awake or slumped <laughs> over a keyboard somewhere. But even even with one person not sleeping and doing 24 hours a day dealing with this, we still need more help. Um, translations is always a place where we need more help. Um, as Joey mentioned, Christian is absolutely awesome. It's not just Christian, obviously. It's Christian and his team of translators behind him. But they always come and go. There are always more languages. There are always more translations we need. There are always bugs in what we have, whether it's software or translations or whatever. Again, please dive in. If you think that um, the particular translation that we have in Swahili for the installer is wrong, Tell us, because 
We don't even know what Swahili looks like. <laughs> um, and there's plenty more stuff. Seriously, if you're interested and want to help out, DI is a really cool project. Um, it's nice and stable and, hey, it works for most people, but there are always more cool things we can do if we just have the time to do it. Dive in. So, switching over to my other hat, Debian CD. Obviously, these two are kind of related, which is why I've done the boff together. Um, of course, we're always short of people uh, for both teams. Um, we cope, but I wouldn't say that we, you know, we, we would always be happy to have more people help. In, right, for Debian CD, we are building massive sets of images every day and every week. Um, the weeklies are continuing, the dailies are continuing, there are tweaks happening all the time whether people notice them. It would be nice if people notice, but equally it's also nice when people don't notice because it means they haven't broken yet. Um, one of the major um, bits of progress w that I've made in the last few months is that we now, uh, we're now building the officially released Debian Live images that are shipped from CD Image. Oh, I'm building. Um, okay, Joey seems seems quite shocked. Um, <laughs> Daniel does some really good work on Debian Live, um, but his schedule and hours don't necessarily always match up that well when we come to do releases. Um, one of the things that we'd like to do um, to be able to make sure that we have timely releases and everything is done together and hopefully all tested together it was to move over to actually get uh, Peterson, our normal CD build machine, to also build the live images. That's basically working for release images so far. The last couple of releases have been built and signed by me. Um, so, plans for the future. Um, we need to work out exactly what image choices we have. So, so far, what we, we tweaked things after Nicaragua. Uh, a couple of years ago. So we don't necessarily build all of the same images, but at the moment we still build for every architecture. We build a NetInst, we build CD1s for every desktop that we currently claim as a, as a first class citizen. So that's currently GNOME, KDE, LXDE, XFCE. Um, the Mate people, mate, I don't know how it's meant to be pronounced, um, I'm sure would love to join in. I'm sure that the other desktop people would love to join us. It's just a case of, frankly, tell us what you need, tell us, and make sure it's all done in task cell. Actually, that, that's something I should have mentioned, is the, the uh, task cell desktop qualification thing. It's also a way for other desktop environments to get added and to get reviewed and yeah. there's a process to get them in. Sure. As soon as a desktop is ready in task cell and we think that it actually gives us a sensible Debian installation, um, tell us, let me know, and we can, we can add it to the set of CDs. It's not trivial, nothing's trivial, let's be honest, but it's not hard. Um, one of the things that I've been tweaking over the last few weeks um, is the choices of CDs. For a while, um, a stupid bug, and it was my fault, I will hold my hand up, um, the GNOME CD that, that was officially labeled the GNOME CD installed XFCE. We had a few bug reports, <laughs> um, but I never actually got around to looking at it, and then it's like, oh, no, my fault, that's fixed. Um, we still have a lot of CDs produced. Um, the, the exact choice of what to do is still open. If we want to essentially give up on the full sets of CDs that we produce, I could be persuaded. DVDs are much more useful. At the moment we do Blu-rays, we do, we do dual layer Blu-rays. Not everybody uses them, but people still seem to ask for them. Yeah, Joey, pass the mic back. Uh, what's the status currently about forcing desktops into fitting into one CD? Um, it doesn't work. Um, the issue with fitting them onto, onto one CD um, is that basically the bigger desktops don't. Um, XFCE and LXDE have for a long time, so they're easy. It's one of the reasons why we, we suggested XFCE as a default desktop for a while. Um, I, I think this is partly a messaging thing. You want yeah. people... If they are if they are limited if they are constrained by needing it on one CD, they need a way to find that out that doesn't involve downloading GNOME, burning it to CD, and then taking it somewhere where they need the CD and they don't have network and finding out that it doesn't work. Exactly. So we need better messaging around yeah. it. 
Um, basically, it's hard. The desktops get more and more features all the time. Even a minimal no more KDE desktop really just has too much to fit on a single CD. Have you thought about just not building GNOME CDs at all? Do we um, need them? That's a very good question. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I mean, just please, if you have ideas, GNOME yeah. or something, why yeah. 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 quite possibly. A DVD. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, if we've already we used to have um, a multi arch DVD one, which had i386, AMD64, PowerPC, and Source, and that would install all the desktops. That's already too big, so we dropped PowerPC. Um, I'm not sure at the moment whether or not actually all the desktops fit even for AMD64 and i386 on a single DVD. It's a wow, we have so much software, it's awesome. Well, guys, can we not squash it a bit more? Well, then I would suggest dropping the, the I mean, if, it, if GNOME doesn't fit on one CD, we should yeah. just pick the upper size on which something reasonable fits. If that's a one sure. gigabyte yeah. USB that you can burn on DVD or whatever. Exactly. But if yeah. it doesn't fit on CD1, just let's not do yeah. it at all. Sure. That's something we, we can absolutely do. Um, and then it, what, one thing we've discussed in the past and has happened already is DVD1 is explicitly sized to fit. Yeah. A few bytes under four gigabytes, yeah. deliberately to make sure that DVD one you can just DD to a USB stick that's four gig, or write it to a DVD and you're not wasting too much space. We can do one gig, two gig, four gig, eight gig versions of everything, but that's just a waste of mirror space. Let's be honest. Um, an exact spe spec or an exact choice, uh, as given to us by by the guys who want it, by the known people, the KDE people, whatever, we can tweak this as much as we need. Anyway. Uh, I am really am digressing, so... Uh, I was just going to suggest, I wonder if we could get PopCon or similar uploading a notice of, did you install via CD, DVD, USB? Could we actually We've get real data here? We have considered care? that in the past. To be honest, um, yes, we can. Please contribute code. Sure. The one detriment of that one is people who are highly disconnected are the people least likely to upload PopCon uh, data. Uh, sure. More day, some data is better than none. Obviously, we'll have to take up the pinch of salt. So, moving on, because wow, I am taking a long time with this, and I want you guys to be talking, not just me. Um, Debian CD v4 is, I've been hacking on for a while. Um, Debian CD3 is, is what is currently in use. One thing that many people have complained about over the years, was never affected me, so it's why it's never happened yet, um, is they want to be able to build Debian CD without having to have a full mirror. Um, it is a major pain in the ass, I understand. All the machines I'm on have a full mirror, why doesn't yours? But I know it's, it's easier said than done. Um, I'm working on, um, I have a branch that's already public. It's way, it's far from complete, which adds HTTP support. So it will actually go and if you, it will build basically enough of a local mirror on the fly just pulling everything that it needs. It's never going to be as efficient as it might be, but it's better than nothing. Fragment? Um, yeah, for uh, approximately 10 years now, I yes. wrote a script that basically does exactly that as a wrapper around Debian CD, and it goes and fetches the installer images called Simple CDD. Um, I'm really excited to hear that might get that kind of support yes. integrated into Debian CD. Sure. It, it, it's coming, it's something I've been hacking on for six months and, and I know I've not made much noise about it. It's hard, it really is. There were, not because it's really you know, computer science hard, it's just there are so many places in Debian CD where we've made assumptions over the years of, I need to know what files to put in, I can just do an LS locally. I've now got to go and grab, st grab remote directory listings over HTTP and hope it works. It, it's a mess. We'll get there. Don't so, <laughs> yeah. There's a load of bug fixes. Um, please report bugs if you're actually a user of Debian CD. I know there aren't many. I actually, it, the more bugs we get, the more chance we, we, we're going to fix them. I want to get regular live builds testing. So again, so we can get some weekly builds out. This hasn't happened yet. It's coming again in my copious free time. Um, if people want to join in and help with this kind of thing, that would be awesome. It takes time. Um, Another one that came up, um, when I started looking at the live builds and I realized actually the only sane way of doing this is building in a VM for a whole slow, slew of reasons. Basically, you need to have root to make a live image because you've got to make device nodes. The only sane way of doing that um, on a system that DSA are involved in is um, you do it in a VM or it doesn't happen. 
I understand it's it's hard. Um, once I've got a VM going, and it, and this is the system I've set up for the live builds, um, we can do cloud images. We can do um, images instead of necessarily installer images, say for embedded architectures. Um, one thing I know uh, Neil Williams has been playing with quite a lot um, in Lava for testing, he's going to be talking about that later in the week, is actually having images that you can test on ARM and a whole, uh, on whatever other architectures you want. Running that and building those on the fly as you go with DI can be quite, it can be quite tough. Um, there's nothing stopping us generating regular images which you can literally just download and stick a DD onto an SD card or, or whatever and run. It, it's something that, no, that nobody's ever actually got to and I'm quite surprised we don't have these yet. But hell, I can do them. Just give me time. And the last thing here, um, I've got a kernel patch to rewrite this week. Um, I've spoken to Case who came up. There's a, there's a minor issue we have with CD builds, um, the way that Debian CD works is it creates a, a tree of hard links as it runs and then makes images from those. On systems where you're not running as the same user as the person who owns the mirror, like for example Peterson or Build Machine, this falls over in a heap because this is dodgy behavior. Um, I've got a kernel patch, or I had one and then I lost it because I overwrote that, that VM by doing an installer test and realised afterwards. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Again, I'm sure we've all we've done that kind of thing. I, I'll, I'm hoping to find time this week to redo that kernel patch. I spoke to him, he's happy to review it. So, discussion. I hope we still have a bit of time left. Um, what else do people want to see? What else do people want to talk about? I, I've already monopolised half an hour here, please tell me. Um, okay. Cool. okay. Uh, <laughs> so um, one of the things that's kind of been brought up on the Debian ARM list was uh, what ARM platforms can we support? Uh, it's basically based on a bunch of kernels. Do we install U-Boot or do we use the onboard U-Boot and all that kind of stuff? I'd be really interested in working towards that or, or at least like focusing on open or fairly open platforms and just you know moving in that direction. Sure. I mean, that's thankfully, now we've got the ARMMP kernel and, and device tree and everything, yes, most kernel, we can at least actually possibly sensibly get to the point where we can run the installer directly. Oh, we, um, I have. Well, it, it, well exactly. Number, now we have. I mean, <laughs> we, uh, we've never had, for example, in Debian CD, we've never had bootable ARM stuff because every platform was so different, it was ludicrous. We're actually not far off the point where we might be able to actually have real bootable stuff that is available straight off the CD or straight off the USB stick or the SD card or whatever. Um, yes, definitely. Let's, let's do that. Uh, I know Neil posted a load of stuff and Ian and Vagrant. Is anybody else interested in helping with that? I, I guess I could just add, I think, I don't know if we're quite at the point of doing it on the CD, but we're definitely at the point where DI yeah. can make images that can boot on these boards quite easily with device tree. Um, yeah. that boot image or something like that. And yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, ARM64, of course, is going to be mostly UEFI, is what various people like ARM are saying, but then a whole lot of people have already shipped, shipped various versions of U boot. It's like. Those pieces of hardware that actually exist don't have UEFI. Really? I wouldn't mind it. No, I uh, the oh, sorry, Seattle I board, I think, does have UEFI. It does. Yes. yes. So anyway, yes. Uh, so I was wondering, with the proliferation of sizes for, oh, do we need a 500 meg image, a mm -hmm. 1 gig, a 2 gig, a 4 yeah. gig, we're pretty much all capable of running CAT, and the vast majority of bigger images are just more UDEBs and more DEBs. Yeah. Could we just create a set of concatenatable images where if you want a 2 gig image, you concatenate the 500 meg, the 1 gig, and the 2 gig image and throw them on a disk? Oh. And then you don't need to store the 500 gig meg data 10 times over for 10 different images? Um. <laughs> and it's it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, somebody would need to write yes. the code. Does it seem like a sensible well, idea yeah. as a baseline of cat these three images mm. and write it to a disk? Was that? If, 
that sounds we like, could a, make like it an work. absolutely awesome idea. Unfortunately, file systems don't work that way. Uh, we could fix that. It wouldn't <laughs> be that hard to do. I use some file systems. Um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I've had a, I've had a bug about for ages um, is to, is to actually to do something similar, which, given a set of CDs or DVDs, um, basically turn that into a, into a mirror that works. So I've had people in the past who bought a set full set of DVDs for me from an architecture. I've got those and then say, right, I want to share this for an entire company, what do I do next? It's, it's harder than it should be um, and it, it's quite related. Um, as again, somebody asked, oh, I forget, a guy asked a couple of years ago, could we do exactly that? Could we take a set of DVDs and make a 16 gig USB stick image? Um, CAT is going to be too simple. Uh, it's it's not being into a file system might work. Oh, absolutely, that, yes. Yeah. It should be entirely feasible to um, come up with a script that will make an image from a smaller set of images. Um, absolutely, that's essentially what Debian CD does. It, it converts the big image, which is the archive, into a smaller set of into a smaller set of images that just happen to work together. Um, Putting smaller images back together and making it work is entirely feasible. Um, it's something that I want to do. I might get to in five years. If you have ideas and if you want to help, please dive in. I filed a wish list bug that was similar at one point, which was I want to make a multi arch CD that is mostly AMD 64 but has those yeah. other thing, you know, the smaller versions of the other yes. images. Um, yes. Debian CD's idea of multi-arch happened um, quite differently to the archive idea of multi-arch. I don't know if people are aware of this. So we have a multi-arch CD and DVD set at the moment, which are basically, we make sure that for any given package, we install it for every architecture that is desired on a CD or DVD. Um, that the, the naming clash is unfortunate, but to be honest, it's the, it is the obvious name to have to describe it. Um, it would be nice, absolutely, to have a have more options in terms of choosing which which subsets you want for different architectures. Um, it's it's a matter of coding. Please dive in. I would love to help. And again, hours in the day and all. Just on the subject of uh, cloud images and MMC yeah. images, so. DI will actually ask you a lot of interesting and useful questions mm -hmm. as you go about key maps and mirrors mm -hmm. and yeah. all these sorts of things. And the problem with images is that they don't, you have to go and sure. mess around tweaking all of that stuff, which is a real pain. Yes. Which is generally why I prefer DI. So if, oh, if this is going to happen, you would need, somebody would need to go out and write some sort of first boot configuration yeah. utility that. <laughs> Well, we we can use preceding for it, but of course, yeah. The problem is that still, the person using it for the first time doesn't get asked the questions. Yeah. If we can actually have, we should be able, hopefully, to defer repurpose. Defer bits the installer until yeah. the first yeah. 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 yeah, repurpose bits, yeah, defer things, and actually. Oh, so maybe all this will sort of exist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be a, a cool thing to do. Paul? I just want to say that the cloud people that already got something called cloud in it that does some of that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Thomas actually, um, and I have had a discussion a few weeks ago where he asked, well, surely, you know, couldn't somebody else do this on official servers and, and push it and whatever? Absolutely, we can build them, we can host them on CD Image alongside all of these. CD Image is, a, is not a wonderful name for the, the central server that we have. We know this, we agreed this five years ago. <laughs> you know, it's just install a or yeah. whatever would be better. It's just that, hey, names stick around <laughs> for a while. <laughs> So, just definitely. Just come up with a patch for Debian.org. Yeah, yeah. So, definitely, at some point, we would, I, I would love to have every possible type of image to install Debian, whether it's, an, whether it's just an image you DD to a disk, whether it's an installer which asks you a whole load of questions and partitions and everything. All of those are, are possible, and we should be working to get them together. It, again, it's a, these are all cool ideas. Please help. So another cool idea. Um, uh, our Can I just put in for one second? Please, somebody tell me that they're putting these down in Gobby so we have notes. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, 
Some of them like got a few test mics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the status of like signed images, um, both within the image itself and signing the actual image? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. How do you mean? Well, I mean, you've got a bunch of checksums and stuff, yeah. but do you have like GPG signed images with the archive keys? Like, how much would it take to make that happen if not? What? We have, so, okay, so all of the images that we ship, all the official ones, um, the weeklies are currently signed with a temporary key and so are the dailies. To be honest, that's something we've only just added quite recently. I resisted it for quite a while because it's 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 essentially meaningless. It's a key that, you know, it, it means nothing. Well, I suppose as some people like it means that at least they've got some indication that it's not been man in the middle. Is there a um, trust part between you and the key? And I have I have cross signed every key that we use with my own personal key. I've on the official CD release keys. I've had a few of the other people around who I can press gang have signed it. So we've had, say, a couple of release managers and various people in the UK, because hell, they happen to be nearby, have signed this, the normal CD signing key. Um, we don't yet do rollover on it, basically because it's faff and I haven't got that far. It'll happen at some point. Um, in terms of, so all of the things are signed, we do get occasional people saying, why, why isn't everything over HTTPS? And, well, we're about to get though, I guess. Well, the problem is the CDs are so big that we want people getting them from mirrors. We don't necessarily want them get, all getting them from, all from the same central site. And signing gets, no, signing and HTTPS and whatever gets harder then. Just mentioning that uh, at least the DI is signed. Uh, Win32 Loader checks that it downloads the signatures sure. and all that, and yes. you can you can download the Debian installer and netboot images that are also in the archive. Yes. Um, the fun thing about actually having <coughs> archive signatures on, say, the release files and whatever inside the CDs, and again, this is a discussion that's come up several times, is. Um, it actually gives you nothing, if anything is worse than nothing. The problem by having the signatures on the CDs um, is that for a lot of people that will means they will then implicitly trust them. Um, if you've been given a CD that has something that claims to have been signed, um, what is your trust path? You have no way of knowing that it, ca that it came through. Yes, I know if you've downloaded a signed image and then it has the archive inside anyway, it's, it's a hard problem. There isn't a solution. Can I just say with the HTTPS, um, if you if you start using the HTTPS a lot with large files, you get into really big problems if people are trying to use squid proxies and things like that because <coughs> it's a different file every <coughs> single time. Sure. And we have a lot of um, uh, problems like that with um, daily build <coughs> test images, which for the same reasons, yeah. um, it can be a real pain if you actually got uh, if everything ends up on HTTPS with no fallback. Sure. I was just wondering if we had any idea what the status of DI on our new architectures was, our PC and ARM64. Has anyone actually tried it? Um, Ian over there, some, probably some stuff out of ports. I've been building ARM64 DI images from Debian ports for a while. Does it work? Um, yeah. Installed. Installs, um, um, but then there's no sort of flash code. Well, I did it in a Zen VM and in QMU, uh, but there's no bootloader in either of those, so I had nothing to integrate with. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I've just last night switched it over to using the official archive, and yeah. there isn't enough bits in it yet for it. Sure. Kibbe has been pestering on a daily basis and giving me an eye on things, things, things yeah. <laughs> pumping up the building. So to get explicitly, I pushed a uh, keyboard chooser uh, yesterday yeah. with patches for ARM64, PPC64, EL. So, so we have all the parts, but possibly not kernels that actually. Uh, the kernels pieces are. Work, but not sure. Okay. Okay. Do we? And we think it works on the hardware available. Yeah, it should do. Cool. The nice thing with, with ARM64 is, is, is it should just work with device tree. You've got a kernel. Yeah, 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 indeed. <laughs> I was just wondering whether, to what degree yeah. it actually tried it. So the installer on an ARM HF and on ARM64, as well as producing you the installer images, which is a directory full of all the device trees that that kernel came with. Yeah. Uh, if you can decode the names of those files into the okay. we've got. Okay. Um, we're very nearly done. Maybe time for one more question. Ready? Yeah. Or PPC64 Uh the, the patches wa were done by the canonical folks. Yeah. So we are using on Ubuntu uh, since 14.04. And also we have an internal image, I mean it's public now, 
for Debian and it's able to install over a VM and over uh, what we call bare metal. Yeah. So it is working pretty fine. Okay, cool. So fingers crossed we should have the new architecture just integrated as a matter of course for Jesse, assuming that it all builds by then. And of course, if you've got stuff, as, as I said earlier, especially DI stuff that does not build for the new architectures, fix it or you will be NMU'd in the next two weeks. <laughs> So please help, or we'll work around you. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably a good time to leave it. Apart from to say, please help. Debian installer, Debian CD, really need your help. There's always more stuff to do. As, as, you, as you can see here from just the discussion we've had, there's more cool things that we all, we've all been wanting to do for years. But, oh Christ, with like two of us, we're not going to get there. Please join in. Thank you.